Today, we're gonna to be installing a second grill on the Jeep Gladiator. Mine. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're joined by a couple of guests. We've got Brother Bob over here, straight up from Punta Gorda. Punta Gorda. And Sissy Die. We don't know where she's from. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put uh, another black matte grill, or the satin finish grill, on this Jeep Gladiator. We did it to mine recently, and I discovered I forgot to do something. Somebody pointed it out to me on the channel that my grill is not complete. So if you're looking to do this and you've got a Sport, because I believe it only applies to the Sport model, the Rubicon comes with this, I'm gonna show you what else you've gotta get. So let's go ahead, get this thing unboxed real quick, and then we'll get this grill off and get the other one on. make sure that it's undamaged. Looks good to me. Okay, first thing we need to do, of course, is pop the hood. And that's easy to do on the Jeep because you don't even have to go inside. There we go. Yeah, if you had the hood struts on, you could just put it up now. But she doesn't have those. So, now ah, listen to that cracking. I hate that. Ugh. Okay, first things first. There are six pens across the front here that you need to remove. Here, 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 and over here. So, we're going to go ahead and pop those off. All you need is a screwdriver and a little trim tool. Make sure that when you do this, and I'll show you this here up close in a second, but in the center, the little pin kind of pulls up and then you use your trim tool to, pro to pry the whole uh, unit out, if you will. So let's see if I can show you guys that a little closer. I don't know if I illustrated that very well in the last video. Yeah, I think uh, right there you can see it. All right, there's this little nub in the middle. Let's put your screwdriver under there. Pry that up a little bit, like so. That releases pressure on the pen. And then slide your trim piece or tool underneath and pull that right out. That's it. And again, you can see how it works. If by chance you do pull this center piece out, it will come out and then you can just stick it back in and then push it down once you replace it back when you're done. So I'll have you hold that. We'll go ahead and get the rest of these out. All right, so we got all those off. That is really it. Now it's just a matter of popping the grill. You should have it loose now so you can give it a little tug. You can see there that it's uh, pretty loose at the top. Make sure that we get these, sometimes the uh, parts that the little holders fit down over, protrude up a little bit. So you wanna make sure you pull it up so you're not fighting that when you're trying to pull the grill out. And one other thing, on the new grill, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but you have to transfer these little foam pads to the new grill. It's much easier to do this when you pull it off because I found it's about impossible to pull these pins off without breaking them. But the good news is, is in the kit are new pins. So you can just cut the backs off, pull them out, and then there is a little bit of double-sided tape behind here, which I'll replace um, to make sure these stay on. I don't think you'd really need it. The pins hold it in, but just because that's the way they do it. All right, so let's go ahead and pull the grill. It's just held on by a bunch of pins, a couple of here, and then some here across the front. So we should, if it comes off as easy as mine did, be able to grab and pull, and there's really no good spot to pull, so. There we go. I always like to do this rather gingerly. And that's it. Again, make sure there's no electrical cords or anything behind it, which there aren't. And I'll show you here, the pens are just across the bottom. 
<clears throat> and right here on each side. And that's all that holds this grill in. Now, the big controversy here, and there has been a little bit of controversy. I had a couple of comments on the channel that I didn't do the right thing or finish my grill because they're supposed to be, according to what I've been told, removable panels along the sides here, across the middle as well, and then up the other side. Now, that comes that way on the Rubicon, but on the Sport and the Sport S, the grill is all one integrated molded piece. These do not come off. You can see here, it's part of the actual grill, so they cannot be removed to put on the other grill so that you have that finished surround, if you will. So we're gonna go ahead and put it on the way that it is. If she wants to change it later, she can. I actually ordered those pieces for mine. Um, they're about $63, I think, shipped from uh, BAM Wholesale, which by the way is where this grill comes from. If you're looking for the part number, uh, check out my install video on the Gobi Gladiator and you can find the part number for it or I'll leave it below. But uh, that's what you have to do if you want that finished um, look with the trim all the way around the grill. So we can go ahead and take these, turn this around for you, take these uh, foam pieces off of here. We'll take that over and pull these and then we put these on the new grill after we have it in. It's easier to do. Matter of fact, I might wait to pull them until we have the new grill in. So we'll set this aside and put the new grill in now. All right, to put this back in, it's the reverse procedure. Make sure that you have all your pins lined up down there, uh, both on the sides and in the front, of course. So go ahead and do that, and you can actually see them here, which makes it nice. And you should be able to just give it a good push, in theory, and it should go in. So. Let's find out. All right. That's it. That's the look so far, and that's how it fits in. However, we do have to take care of those foam pieces, so let me show you how to do that. Okay, gonna go ahead and pull off these foam pieces now. Like I said, in the kit, they actually give you four replacement pens, and they do that because I don't know how you get these things out without breaking them. And since they gave us new ones, we're just gonna cut the backs off and pull these out. It makes it easy. So right here on the back, there's the little nubs that stick out. We're just going to go ahead and cut those and we should be able to push what's left through. And then again, there is some double-sided tape about in this area. We'll just peel that off and replace it with new tape. And you can see the double-sided tape that's left, well there is none left. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a strip there and then we'll be able to stick this on the new grill and go ahead and put this in. Okay, we've got the old pins out, they just push out. We've got the new ones here and then I did put a piece of fresh double-sided tape on there. So I would go ahead and stick these through first. It's easier to line it up if you do that. Ask me how I know. Okay, go ahead and get those just started. And then, you can only put it on one way. Whoops! Only put it on one way, really. So it should go just like so. There we go. And I just push in. And then just give it a little push for that double-sided tape to go ahead and adhere. And you don't want to go too far because this is foam. I mean, you can actually indent these, not all the way through, but pretty flat if you push too hard. So I don't want to do that, but I do want to make sure they're seated properly. 
And that's it. We'll go ahead and do the other side, then we'll put the push pins back in, and that'll be it. Okay, we've got the foam pieces back on. Uh, pretty easy to do. Now all we have to do is put the pens back in, and we're done. Do you have the pens? Okay. Let's start, uh, no rhyme or reason really, but I'll start over here on the end. Now, again, these, you just push them down in the hole, and then push this center part down. That puts pressure on the bottom of the pen and holds everything together. That's it. That's the finished product. Now, again, if we had the white pieces, uh, they would go around the edges here, then marry up with the hood and give you that black, just center piece look there, as opposed to having black around the edges. We'll shut the hood here in a minute and show you, but that's it. it takes, if I wasn't filming, probably could do it in 15 minutes. Um, pretty simple mod to do. I think if you had really, like, hugely strong hands, you probably wouldn't even need any tools because all you have to do is pull out those plugs. So let's get the hood shut, we'll take a look. Okay, that's it, we're done, the hood's down, you guys can see what it looks like. Um, she thinks she's actually gonna get those trim pieces and keep them black, a mosquito flying around in here but keep them black as opposed to uh, surrounding this with white, I guess. So we'll see. Um, again, those aren't a ton of money, about 63 bucks. It's the painting that's gonna cost a little more money, unfortunately. But that's the look without them. I don't know, you have to decide whether you want them or not. Um, it would give you a more finished look, and there are a couple holes here, but they are decorative enough that you could probably get by without anybody noticing, depending on what you wanna do. quick, don't forget to check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive, all about my 2020 Toyota Tacoma. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. I like the conclusion of this. And smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.